And so I've been writing it in my imagination since I was a little girl, but for wow. some reason, even though I had published a lot of poetry, a lot of articles, a lot wow. of essays, uh, I contributed a chapter in someone else's book, I never uh, thought much about writing a book of my own, but uh, I taught at the university for 29 years, I've done some speaking tours, and people kept asking me, where's your book? <laughs> they wanted to see your book. book. I want to buy a book of yours. <laughs> wow. You know? I, and, and so that was what really propelled me to mm -hmm. write the book, um, because so many people asked me to do it. Yeah. And what is it about? Could you tell our listeners um, briefly um, what the book is about and your intentions in writing the book? Well, I have spent uh, over 35 years working with a lot of different people, but really specializing in addictions. Mm. Um, so working with uh, recovering addicts and alcoholics, as well as their family members, as well as um, uh, children who were raised in alcoholic homes and wow. addicted homes, and um, worked a lot with people who suffered from trauma mm. from early childhood. And, uh, and so I felt that, uh, you know, I love uh, the 12 step program philosophy, mm. and I love psychology. And the foundation of the 12 step program uh, philosophy is uh, spiritual fitness. Oh, wow, yeah. It is um, really because what addicts and alcoholics do is that they run after the drug and the alcohol as mm. if it's their God. Wow. And, um, and so there needs to be a shift. Mm. And it doesn't have to be a specific. Uh, theological shift, a religious shift, but some sort of shift in uh, a power greater than oneself that is healthy, that is loving, that is helpful, mm. um, that they can begin to believe in. Mm. And uh, that that's a big part of the program. And so I loved uh, the beauty of the support system mm. of all these people coming together uh, who have the commonality of substance abuse and helping mm. each other no ulterior motive, yeah. just because the program says that um, you must give back wow. you know, what so, you were given. So, so what, I love that combination. Yeah. So what was it um, that made you decide specifically? Um, is there something that happened uh, in your younger years? What was it that said that you wanted to specialize in addiction and helping people with their addiction? My own human mind said, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, so you first said no. It was not my idea at all. I would never have dreamed up such an idea. That's funny. I would have said, I don't want to work with people who don't want help, who don't tell the truth, who are in denial, wow. who have conditions on what they're going to talk about and how far they're going to go in, oh. in treatment. I want somebody that's really open and ready. You know, and uh, if I'm going to do uh, counseling, I want to work with people who are really receptive to counseling. Right, right. Not people where I have to be Sherlock Holmes, you know. And, uh, now, what did that really mean? <laughs> right. I'm telling you the tip of the iceberg, but what's uh, underneath that, you know? Wow. So I wouldn't have chosen it. But, you know, the best things in my life have come, I believe, from God mm -hmm. nudging me to go somewhere where I wouldn't have gone on my own. Mm -hmm. And a God is a good nudger. And he uses <laughs> other people as well. <laughs> and so I got it from God, and I got it um, from, uh, I had a professor, I was looking for a job, doing counseling uh, somewhere, and he said, oh, I know this place. They do substance abuse counseling. And I said, I don't think so. I don't think I want to do that. And he said, oh, I think you'd be great at it. And, I, and the people are really good, and I know people that work there, and it's a seems like a really credible place. I think you ought to go interview there. And, and no one gave me any other ideas of where to go interview. So I was left with that one. So I went and I sat in the interview with the two directors, clinical and administrative director. And I, and I told them, I don't know anything about this. I know a lot about psychology. I know a lot about different things. But I really don't know about addiction and alcoholism. I was trying to talk them out of hiring me. <laughs> And at the very end of the interview, it was so odd, they said, we want you when you need to start. <laughs> and that's what I knew for certain, this is God's work. <laughs> because I think God has a sense of humor, and I think he works in mysterious ways. <laughs> and, uh, and they said, you know, we have a training program, and so yeah. you'll be involved in the training program. And then they said, with all of our people that don't have an inside view 
of uh, alcoholism and addiction, we tell them they need to go to open 12-step meetings so mm. that they will know. We don't want anyone in our staff sending people to meetings that they don't know anything about themselves. They need to have okay. first-hand experience. So mm. go off and go to some open 12-step meetings so wow. you get an idea of it. And the very first AA meeting I went to, I sat there with tears running down my cheeks the entire wow. time. Because there were two things that really moved me to tears. One was that um, I was, I thought it was just so amazing how these people told such a deep truth. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there probably was about, oh, 60 people, 70 people at that meeting. And they didn't wow. know everyone, obviously. Right, yeah. And they told such a deep truth yeah. about their life. And uh, there's a formula in AA that you speak experience, strength, and hope. And the experience is kind of what they call the war stories, you know, the horrible things that have happened to people in their life. And um, the strength are, you know, the, the strength of the AA program, mm -hmm. and the spiritual foundation, and wow. the support, and the new way of life. And the hope is, here's how my life has changed now. Here's how yeah. I have changed now to wow. inspire other people that it can work for them too. And so I, I just, the depth of sharing that went on and how people just wanted to bend over backwards to help another person yeah. without any ulterior motive. I love the, the unselfish generosity wow. of, of the meeting. And I, I, I was just uh, immediately fell in love with it. Wow. Fell in love with it. So with helping everybody else, um, what has helped you in your spiritual path? Can you tell us a little bit about um, your relationship with Jesus Christ and, and God and how um, that's moved you through the years? Yes. I had, uh, I had a grandfather. He was my favorite person in all my family members. And my grandfather was a very, very spiritual man. Mm. And I loved staying with him. And he always uh, read me Bible stories. And he always prayed out loud. And, and his prayers were very interesting because he never asked God for anything. His prayers were on a long, long recitation of thank you for this and thank you for that and oh, I'm so grateful for this and thank you for that. Wow. I mean, everything from the smallest details of life and yeah. up into the big things. And there was one thing my grandfather said at the end of his prayer that I didn't like as a young child. He said, and Lord, if you're ready to take me home right now, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and and you're like, no, I don't want you to go. Not yet, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> but he always oh. ended his prayers with that. Wow. He was so grateful for everything that was given to him. And it was a simple man, lived a very humble life. Yeah. Um, but he was always so grateful. And he, and he knew where home was. Yeah. And he, he was happy to go there whenever God called him back. Um, wow. And, you know, some of the stories I remember my grandfather reading me and, and uh, he'd always buy me the Bible story books for children and so on. And um, what I loved most about Jesus was um, his interaction with children and his interaction with people that others shunned. You know, let that woman come to me. Let the children come to me. Let that unclean person come to me and touch me. I, I so loved that there was no, um, there were no conditions, mm -hmm. there was no divisiveness. Uh -huh. It was a pure uh, streaming flow of love that went to everyone and everywhere. Wow. That's what I love most about yeah. Jesus. Wonderful. And lastly, if there's somebody that's watching this program that might be struggling with uh, alcohol or some type of addiction, what would be something that you would like to tell them if they're watching right now? You know, addiction it is such a disconnection. It's a mm. disconnection from the true self that God creates. Mm. It is a disconnection from loved ones as well as strangers. Um, it is a disconnection from God mm. or whatever name people give to the God in their life. Um, it is a disconnection from the nature of life. Because life is about constant change, and life on earth is dual in nature, in nature, meaning that we have war and peace, and we have love and hate, and we have birth and death. We, we, we have everything here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and 
people that get lost in alcohol and other drugs, they want to have control over life. Um, they, they want to control the way that they feel and how they think and how their life is as much as possible with these artificial substances because life has been hard for them. But what happens is they create a, a tinier and tinier and tinier life all the time. And that loss from all that disconnection is a deep, deep depression and it only gets worse. Mm -hmm. and, and all addiction uh, starts off giving the illusion of, wow, we've just hit nirvana, we've just hit the jackpot. Mm -hmm. This is what I've been wanting to feel all my life. Wow. You know? yeah. And it ends up not only taking all of that euphoria back, but leaving people in such a tiny, horrible place. Everything that people want out of alcohol and other drugs, they get the polar opposite of mm. as addictive disease progresses. Because yeah. every defense mechanism, and alcoholism and addiction is a defensive system, mm -hmm. every defense mechanism works pretty well for a short period of time, yeah. then has diminishing returns, and eventually backfires completely. Wow. Absolutely. So what would you recommend somebody, if somebody was in that situation, what could they do to help turn their lives around? To, to see if they could uh, remember, or if they have no memories, imagine what would be something good and wholesome. What would be something loving? Mm -hmm. Have there been any miracles in my life? Mm -hmm. Has there been ever a time in my life when a tiny little voice said, you might not want to do that. Mm -hmm. You might want to go here instead. Any, anything of a positive nature, spiritually, or a positive nature for humanity, or a positive nature from animals, or plants, or nature, yeah. anything positive at all, to start with something positive, no matter how small it is, mm -hmm. is whatever we pay attention to, Mm -hmm. Whatever we give energy and time and emotion to grows. And so to start paying attention to one thing that feels wholesome and healthy and positive, whatever it is, and let it grow, and let it grow. And ask themselves, do they know anyone who used to be like them, mm -hmm. who is now clean and sober? Yeah. Do they yeah. know anyone who's ever gone to AA, mm -hmm. or treatment, or counseling, or yeah. gotten any sort of help for addiction? Um, and, and just start noticing that because, you see, there's a part of the self that is addicted. There's another part of the self that is trying to resist the addiction, especially yeah. when the addiction has progressed and it's not working so well. There's another part that's, oh, I, I really shouldn't. Yeah. This is really awful. It's got, here I am sitting in jail because of this. Mm. Here I am homeless because of this. Mm. Here I am with all my loved ones turned away from the not wanting anything to do with me, but where is something positive? Where is help? Because there's another perspective. There's a third perspective always waiting until we listen to it. Mm -hmm. And then we can stop the chatter and the busyness and relax even just a little bit and listen. Is there another perspective? Because God gave us this soul, this higher self, whatever we want to call it, mm -hmm. spirit. Within us, deep within us, there is a place of absolute truth. And when we can calm and quiet ourselves enough, what, to, what comes from that place? What is another perspective? It's not the disease, and it's not the trying to run away from or fight the disease either. It's a place of peace. Mm -hmm. It's a place of love. It's a place of truth. That's no, beautiful. And so, where is that inside of me? Where have I caught glimpses of it? Yeah. And, and just begin to work with that. It doesn't matter if it starts small, because once we really connect again, God, higher power, whatever name we give, soul, whatever name we give that, once we begin to connect with something that is so pure, yeah. that is so powerfully present, it begins to heal. Wise and eternal. Yeah. Yeah. That that has a power unlike any other kind of earthly power. Wow. Amen. That's what yeah. people need to begin yes. to connect with. Yep. In it, whatever yeah. way, shape, form possible. Wow, that sounds beautiful. Well, thank you so much for coming today, Mary. We really appreciate it. It was wonderful getting to know you better. And uh, again, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you very much.